did they say at the hospital, sissy? I just went into the hospital for a regular checkup. The doctors were disgusted with my good health. When you called me this morning, I was so relieved I could die. I shouted a silent hallelujah to myself. I've heard some very disturbing rumors about you, Sissy. Rumors? Such as what rumors? I love you too much to repeat them. Repeat them? Astonish me with them. Well, this part you had over from Capri. Last month, went back to Capri, babbling about poor Sissy. They said they couldn't sleep here because you spent the whole night shouting over loudspeakers and pressing electric buzzers. Capri has turned into a nest of vipers and the sea is full of medusas and the medusas are spawned by the witches, male and female. The kind that have little forked tongues in their mouths like lizards. Now, I shall tell you the truth if you should care to hear it. I am writing my memoirs over a very elaborate intercom system to my secretary, Miss Black. And that is the truth of the story. Has it ever occurred to you that life is all memory, except for each present moment that goes by so quickly you can hardly catch it? <laughs> now, don't depress me. Oh, no, look, now, look, watch. I walk. When I was there is a memory. I take another step. Where I was before I took the other step is a memory, Bill. Now watch, watch. I walk to the end of the terrace. I come back. When I was at the end of the terrace is a memory now. Look! Shooting star. Shut! It's a memory! All husbands, all lovers, are a memory now. You seem very wrought up, dear. <sighs> Today, when I was dictating to Blackie, the story of the, of the one great love of my life, my marriage to wildly beautiful and beautifully wild young poet named Alec. He loved mountain climbing, fast cars, roulette, and me. We begin our day at sundown and get out of bed and put on the robe of a samurai warrior with the sword belt and the sword, and I'd jump out of bed as naked as he, and pick up a little pearl-handled revolver. Then we'd threaten each other. I'd say, surrender your sword or I'll, I'll shoot you. And he'd answer, put down your pistol or I'll chop off your head. What fun. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. The point is, today, while I was describing Alec, the poet and the mountain climber, another poet climbed the mountain to see me. He, uh, he sent this book to me to identify himself. His picture's on the uh, frontispiece. Wow! Christopher Flanders, still in circulation. Well, God help you, Sissy. I don't want to go into any terrifying detail, but Christopher Flanders has the unfortunate reputation of calling on a lady just a step or two ahead of the undertaker. Why, just last summer he was staying with some Texas oil people, not in the best of health, but in the worst. Well, one night at dinner, that wicked old Duke of Palmer, we always called him the Palmer Violet, poured a bottle of champagne over Christopher's head and said, I christen thee, Christopher Flanders, the angel of death, il angelo della morte. And the name has stuck to him, 
I'll tell you more. When the Texas oil lady found out why the Palmer Violet had given poor Chris that name, she was thrown into a panic and told him he must check out the first thing the next morning. Well, that night, he swallowed some sleeping pills. He's done this before, or we call it a sleeping trick. And it is a trick, because Chris always tells the servant, wherever he's staying, to call him early in the morning so that he can get on the road. Consequently, you see, he's always found and revived before the pills can be fatal. Bill, follow me. Where to? The Pink Felina. He's been asleep ever since he'd been here. I think he may have been play, playing his sleeping trick on me. Breathing and pulse, normal, good color. Seems to be sleeping naturally. <laughs> 